Well, we knew that uh, with the advent of so many new targeted drugs, it had been difficult to uh, develop drugs and get them to patients in a timely fashion. Typically, for a drug like Herceptin, targeted to HER2, it took almost 15 years to get that drug out to patients. We wanted to come up with a way in which we could find active drugs that could go on to phase three and get to patients faster. And at the same time, find those drugs that weren't active for breast cancer so that we wouldn't waste time doing trials that weren't going to yield help for patients. So iSpy is a um, adaptively randomized phase two trial. That means that we have a control arm, uh, which is typically the standard chemotherapy for neoadjuvant breast cancer. Um, and then we test multiple other drugs against that control. Uh, this is a standing platform trial. That means the trial has been going since 2010, and we've been able to test a variety of drugs over that period of time. Drugs can come into the trial, be tested, and then leave the trial. This enables us to test multiple drugs simultaneously from a variety of different drug companies. That's something that really wasn't possible before. And as a phase two trial, our goal is really to try to identify the winners. And so we use an adaptive mechanism that enables us to really use as few patients as necessary to find that answer. What is an effective strategy? And we have a threshold that we use to say that if, if this new combination of drugs is effective, it's got to have an 85% likelihood of being successful in a subsequent phase three trial. So our endpoint is intimately linked with the goal, which is to get active, effective drugs to phase three so that they can get to patients. Well, because this is a neoadjuvant trial, meaning we give the treatment before surgery, we, uh, we uh, enroll patients who are candidates for that treatment. Now, it turns out that whether you give chemotherapy before surgery or after surgery, it's equally effective. So in general, these are patients who we already know need chemotherapy of some sort, either by virtue of how large the tumor is or whether it's involving the lymph nodes. And so patients who are being screened and treated in a clinic where the surgeon says, you know, I think it would be great for us to be able to shrink this tumor. I know you're gonna need chemotherapy. Let's give the chemotherapy up front. Those are exactly the kind of patients that we want to bring on to the trial. And the reason that's so important is that by giving the chemotherapy first and looking at its effect on the tumor, we can use that effect, something we call the pathologic complete response rate, the PCR rate as a surrogate for ultimately how those patients will do long term. So our goal was to basically um, take uh, the standard chemotherapy that we would give neoadjuvantly and now start to test against that novel combinations of drugs that we think have a high likelihood of being more effective. So TDM1 and pertuzumab were just such a combination in HER2-positive breast cancer. They're very synergistic in the way that they work. One binds one area on HER2, one binds the other. The TDM1 antibody, her, uh, Herceptin antibody is bound to a very effective chemotherapeutic, and so that really homes it into the tumor. And we knew that this was a very effective strategy in other patient populations that had been studied. So when we brought it into the trial, we actually said, this looks so effective that maybe we could leave out one of the other chemotherapeutics that we typically use, the drug called paclitaxel. Paclitaxel has been a very effective drug in breast cancer, but unfortunately it causes people to lose their hair and to get neuropathy, which is a side effect that can be very bothersome and even debilitating, particularly if it becomes permanent. So this gave us the opportunity not only to test new targeted drugs, but actually drop out one of the older drugs that tended to give people side effects. So I think what's really exciting about these results is that the combination of pertuzumab and TDM1 was more effective at bringing patients to that intermediate endpoint, pathologic complete response. So more patients got to a pathologic complete response than with the standard therapy. About 30% higher rate of PCR with TDM1 and pertuzumab. And at the same time, we saw less toxicity with TDM1 and pertuzumab. So we didn't see the rates of alopecia and neuropathy that you would normally see if you had to give the patients paclitaxel. Moreover, we didn't see a lot of other bothersome side effects with this combination. Overall, it's very safe. We didn't see a very much in the way of myelosuppression or even diarrhea, something that had been of concern with these drugs previously. Uh, and so I think that this is a winner on two fronts. 
one in how effectively it can improve PCR rates, but other at the, uh, but in addition, the fact that it can reduce the toxicity that patients are experiencing with the therapy. The take home message here is that the neoadjuvant setting is a really powerful way for us to test drugs and find those that are going to be effective in helping to cure more patients with breast cancer. And I think that what we have seen with this trial is that patients are willing to go on to these types of trials. We have extensive safety monitoring and we can bring these new drugs to patients early in the trajectory of disease. And so TDM1 pertuzumab is a very exciting regimen. The, the effects that we've seen obviously need to be confirmed in a phase three trial, but we see in iSpy an opportunity now to use this as our new foundation. And because it's so effective and lacks toxicity, it should be easier to start to combine it with other drugs. And we're really excited in the HER2 phase to start to combine it with immunotherapy because we know that the immune system is very important in HER2 positive breast cancer. And so we're forging new relationships, for example, um, a, a drug called atezolizumab uh, is something that we're now going to start to combine with uh, the TDM1 uh, in hopes that we can actually take that PCR rate even higher.